Well, welcome back to By George. Today we're at the Nio Town Hall. The Nio Town Hall was opened in 1924 and has been at the heart of a very vibrant community ever since. It has been used everything from book fairs to showing films. Today we're here because it's the 100th year of the Nio and Crofton Downs Residents Association. This photograph was taken in 1933 of the Executive Committee of the Nio Progressive Association as it was in those days. The person sitting in the centre has been identified as Mr Cummings. Mm, 100 years. It does seem a long time, doesn't it? See in the Onslow Historian, which is here, um, there's a record of the first annual report of the association. Um, and the um, president at the time said the committee continued to press the matter of water and drainage as the city engineer had been instructed to prepare plans and estimates. So right from the very first, um, first meeting. Acknowledge two really important, important totra in our community who are not here today but who I think uh, were pivotal in getting the modern progressive association association established and grounded. One of those is Francis Lee, who's almost 96 and is in um, Malvina Major now. She would like to have come, but couldn't make it today. She was the secretary through the 1990s, and then she turned her um, indomitable strategy skills and courage to tackling Trillisic Park, and really what we've got there is a Tonga that is priceless, isn't it, for those of you who are familiar with it, the tracks and the walks and so on. She was the force behind that, but she was the secretary here for those um, eight years of the 1990s. And the second person I want to mention is Trevor Lloyd, who's also not here tonight. Trevor has, he was the chairperson in 1998-99, he tells me, um, but he was the one who developed the first vision statement, which became the vision for Greater Nio, which um, I helped with the council organise the community meetings for that. These you can have a look at later on. Um, in 2002, that came to fruition. So Tre and Trevor is still on the association, is he not, Ian? He's not now, but he's, he's turned 92, so I mean, he can be given honourable discharge, I think, as well. But those two people really have been foundational um, struts in the, um, in the uh, organisation that we know. Um, I'll just tell you these names, you probably have heard them. In the 1950s, it was Sid O'Dell, I've already mentioned him. Then it was Eric Hardy-Jones. Now, he, Eric Hardy-Jones lived over in Crofton Downs. So there was a connection um, with uh, Crofton Downs, although the name wasn't uh, in the, the association's name as... as um, yes. oh, Mr Justice Naser was the chairperson um, for five years, five years in the 1970s. And then Les Stevens, um, who still lives over in Chelmsford Street there. Yep. Les is here. Good on you, Les. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Patricia Webster. And Les, you did it again, I see, in 1991. So that's, that's good. Then there were a couple of others, Stephen Langley and Simon Riley in the 1990s. And then Trevor took over for a year. And then I took over in 1999 and went through until 2003. Uh, or end of 2003, Julia took over, did it for three years, because, uh, uh, yeah, and then we came back again and did it together in 2010 jointly, because, you know, when you're working as well as, as um, trying to run something like this, it was quite a lively group. Um, this was not just a monthly meeting where you went away and didn't have anything in, to do in between times. Um, in fact, I was just showing there's some pamphlets here, the Coromaco Stream. Um, our focus was really on the environment and the big picture, what we wanted for our community, bringing people together and making sure that we all feel that sense of community which has always been so strong here. Thank you.
just like to start by acknowledging my uh, past parliamentary colleague, Peter Dunn, um, Nicola, I think I saw you down there, and of course Rebecca uh, from the Council. Are often, I'm sorry, Ray, I didn't see you there too, acknowledging Ray. Whenever I come to these meetings, particularly when there's a major milestone, um, I'm reflecting on the role of residents' associations. And Ian, I think what you just said then um, could be a benchmark for what residents' associations should be, is that it's not here to block. It's actually here often to be a conduit, um, to make sure that people do know what's going on. And I know that as an MP who deals with residents' associations from Tawa um, right through to Wadestown, um, these residents' associations are the eyes and ears of these communities. Uh, as I go further north, the new communities there are often... I see that a lot of them are lamenting the lack of trees and the lack of you know, bush around their suburbs. And I say to them, don't worry, have a look at Nio, have a look at Wadestown, because, and have a look at the old photos of those places. Um, and they looked like you look now. And because of the vision of residents' association, because of the vision of people who actually put it all together, now look, you know, go into Cummins Park. I've been to those picnics, and you sit around, and it's just ideal. Well, they didn't come from nowhere, those trees. They came from ideas. Um, because, again, go back and have a look. This was all farmland. There wasn't much here, um, if you have a look at those old photos. So for those and the names that we went through there of all those people who have been chair of these residents' associations, um, you really are part of the building blocks of this place. You said all the things that I was going to say. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> um, but when, when I received the invitation from Ian, I was amazed. A hundred years of, of this residents' association, and I think that the Onslow Residents Association has been going for a long time. It's been going for seven years. So I think we've got a lot of catching up to do. So, um, but, but no, it's just amazing. I, I echo what uh, Greg has said about residents associations. You know, you really, really are important because you are the, the ears and, and sort of voices of the local people. You know, sort of when we have our meetings, we talk to everyone about what is it that you actually want. There are so many changes in Wellington now. So what do they actually want to see with Wellington? What do they want to see with our own area? What do they want to see with, you know, the, the medium density? The, um, you know, where do we put the people that are coming into Wellington? So there's all these questions and, and everyone has an opinion. So it's the residents associations and who are closest to the people and who listen to them. So I really think that this is it's amazing that you guys have been going for 100 years. Ian, you didn't even look that old, but, um, but well done. So thanks, thanks very much, and keep it up, everyone. Thank you. Because I've lived in Nio for seven years, I feel like such a, a newbie, the sort of, and, and, you know, this context of, you know, 100 years of service to this community. But I want to say, I guess, as a relative newcomer to our community, how the work that people here today and prior generations have done. Um, I enjoy the fruits of that in terms of this being a great place to live. I just want to acknowledge um, the previous Mayor, Andy Foster, great to see you Andy and all of your service to the community. Before I go, thanks to Viv, as I said she, she recognised the, the date um, and organisation today is, is thanks to Viv, so thank you, that's really, really appreciated. So perhaps I show here, thank you. Okay, so um, I think I was president around 2003-2004, mm, can't really remember now. I think Mary's got the list. <laughs> and um, uh, my most significant contribution was to change our name from the NIO Progressive Association to the NIO Crofton Downs Residents Association. Um, Professor Leach down in Otago wrote a really interesting book called The Twelve Cakes of Christmas. And in that she traced the she and two others traced the development of the heavy fruit cake, Christmas cake, bride cake. And um, that's where I always turn to for inspiration about cakes. And in 1904 there were two women in Christchurch uh, who ran a, a cookery school and they published a cookbook that got reprinted several times. It was a very popular cookbook for 
a bride cake. Anyway, by 1914, uh, 1915, um, that recipe had come as far as Wellington and was reprinted in a uh, fundraising cookbook for World War I soldiers make some money. And it had changed from the recipe uh, that was in Christchurch for the addition of, of all things, ginger. It's quite heavy on ginger. So if you like ginger, you might like the cake. So anyway, it is possible, or not improbable, that the people who initially started um, the Residents Association may have actually eaten this recipe. So there you go. That's the story of the cake, and I hope you enjoy it. And I think, um, because we've had uh, quite a few people uh, unable to make it, I think, Mary, you're going to get to cut it, because I think you're the longest-serving president who's here. Here we have it. 100 years.